A bog filter is a great pond filter for anyone looking to achieve clean, clear pond water. They're easy to build yourself. You don't need to buy expensive filters or kits. So in this video, I want to cover the basics of bog filtration so that anyone can understand how and why they work and also the ponds where they won't work. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel and website is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. A bog filter works by moving water through surfaces that are covered in good bacteria. So let's take a look at how that's being done on this pond. This pond is using my bog in a barrel design. It's simply an old olive barrel or similar food grade container. The top has been cut off. It has a clean out pipe with a valve to flush the filter at the base of the barrel and a larger pipe that allows water to exit the barrel and return to the pond. To create a watertight seal for the pipes, I use uni seals. I'll put a link in the description. Water is piped into the barrel and the plumbing looks a bit like this. The pipe comes in over the top of the barrel and has a T-piece down the bottom to disperse the water. In this design, I also added a breather pipe. The main purpose of this is to prevent the filter from siphoning back into the pond if the pump is shut off. The barrel is then filled with rock and pebble. Larger rock on the bottom, progressively getting smaller as we move up the filter. This rock and pebble will become the home of the good bacteria and they will purify the water. The water is pumped into the bog. It's forced to make its way up through the rock and the pebble that is covered in good bacteria. So that's the basic gist of how it works. But to achieve crystal clear water, you need to size the bog filter adequately and to a lesser degree, get the flow rate right. So the barrel bog filter that is keeping this pond clear is only 220 litres or 44 gallons. That makes it only really suitable for a pond that holds around 2,200 litres or about 500 gallons. As a general rule of thumb, we want the filter to be 10% or more of the pond's volume for a small goldfish pond. With koi, it's more like 15 to 20%. And with ponds that you might want to take a dip in, you'll aim for 20% or more. More's always better. I like to filter based on volume. Some people like to filter based on surface area. Either way, a bog filter is much larger than a more traditional store-bought filter, but that's one of the things that makes them so darn effective. The sheer amount of wet surface area that's available for the bacteria means that there's more of it, and they are the backbone of all water filtration. The bacteria process nutrients that are created by the fish and anything organic that falls into the pond. If there isn't enough bacteria, you'll get opportunistic single-celled algae to consume these nutrients and that turns your pond green. The amount of flow through the filter is another important aspect of bog filtration. A bog is not just great at growing bacteria, it can also trap and store sediments. If we move the water through the bog too quickly, these sediments will just get blasted through the filter and return to the pond. I've found that in most backyard pond situations, sizing the pump at six times the volume of the bog works great. I like variable speed pumps and I'll usually dial them back to save on energy consumption. I'll link some that I like down in the description. On larger ponds, you can use less flow as the sheer volume of water tends to make it more stable and less prone to big fluctuations. But I still think it's beneficial to have more flow available if you need it and then you can dial it back. That way if you're getting a lot of sediment spilled up inside the pond, you can stir it all up, crank the pumps up a bit and pull it all into the filters where it can more easily be removed. So before I move on to the types of ponds where a bog won't really work, 
I just want to recap the basics. Once you understand the basics, you can make a bog filter for any size pond. This is a design for a larger pond, but the overall goals are the same. Water is dispersed evenly and moves up through wet surface area. Usually that's rock and pebble, but it can really be anything that provides a surface for the bacteria. We also have a clean out port. This allows the bog to be completely drained and flushed out. The pipework still comes in over the top of the bog and there's a breather pipe to prevent siphoning. We use different sizes of rock and pebble to help the solid materials settle out and it also makes cleaning easier. Plants can be added to help remove excess nutrients. So no matter the size, the basics are always the same. Move water through surfaces that are colonised by good bacteria, size the bog appropriate to the size and use of the pond, maintain a flow that is slow enough that solid materials are trapped in the bog and don't return to the pond, add a breather pipe to prevent siphoning and have a way to completely drain and flush the bog. With those basics, you can modify any design to suit your needs. Achieve the basics and you're basically guaranteed clean, clear water. So when will a bog not work? In my opinion, a bog isn't a good option in a natural clay lined pond. Clay particles will not become trapped in a bog filter. They'll remain in suspension and pass on through even with a slow flow. Clay lined ponds are often much larger than common backyard ponds. Therefore, adding a properly sized bog filter comes at significant expense, even if you do it yourself. I think the money's better spent on adding marginal plants, creating swales that will slow down water flow and trap nutrient rich sediments before they reach the pond. Adding some aeration can also be quite cheap and beneficial. You could try adding flocculants to settle the clay particles but they'll still be present and will get stirred up again and again. And because clay line ponds are larger, the amount of product required becomes expensive. And my channel's about trying to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. So I don't want to encourage people to spend money when they won't achieve their desired results. So in a line pond, it's really easy to achieve crystal clear water with a bog filter. In a clay line pond, it's a waste of time and money. That's just my opinion, but I'm sure there's some success stories out there. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. If it was, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. As always, thanks for watching. See ya.